welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 12, 9, and 7. If you are interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist lifestyle, you have come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button down below the video. In today's video, I will be going through a new online history curriculum with you called the Nomadic Professor. Now, this curriculum is primarily designed for high school students and beyond, but certainly you can present it to upper middle school students at your discretion. Before I get started, I want to make it clear that I myself have not used this curriculum. I don't have any kids in this age range and have had no reason to look into history curriculums for high schoolers. However, the creators of this curriculum approached me and asked me if I would be willing to take a look and do an online review if I thought it would be worthwhile for my viewers. And I do think it's something to explore. Now, one of our main concerns as secular homeschoolers is obviously the degree of bias in any history curriculum and the perspective from which it approaches history. As someone who has not used the entire curriculum, I cannot speak to the bias or perspective of the entire course. However, I can say that the lessons that I viewed offer an opportunity for students to look at primary and secondary documents and look at perspectives from both sides of an issue. Many of the lessons start with a question instead of a title, and then you go on to explore you know, facts as well as documents and then come up with different conclusions based on those documents. There are in fact specific exercises designed to create opposing viewpoints from the same set of documents. So I think that type of critical thinking is very encouraging in terms of promoting a critical look at bias and perspective when we look at documents. I would also encourage you to look at the frequently asked questions on the Nomadic Professor page because it addresses the question of bias and specifically links to a blog post of theirs that goes into the nuances of bias and perspective at length. Okay, so with that intro, let me dive right in. Now, when you get to the Nomadic Professor website, this is what you will see. You'll see an about section, courses, pricing, and their blog. That's where you'll find that article about bias that I mentioned. Here you have Why Go Nomadic, which is this page. You have all of the courses, the team, and a description of the two creators. You have reviews on it. There's frequently asked questions, which also addresses bias, and their contact info. As far as courses, right now they have American history and world history. The American history is what is available right now. The world history is still in development. One of the things that struck me is that the very first review on their intro page is highlighting the fact that they're trying to approach this from a non-biased perspective. And I thought that was telling or at least encouraging. You have, we had searched a long time for a history course that would be free as much as possible from a slanted agenda-driven perspective, no matter how well-intentioned it might be, and had almost given up when I returned to the Kathy Duffy website and found the review on the Nomadic Professor courses. I will link those Kathy Duffy reviews in the description box down below because she does get into detail about her perspective on it as well, and it is a glowing review. The way that the course is structured before I get into the details is that it includes various types of media to go through these different periods in history. Now you have a very clear outline of how to proceed and each lesson is embedded with everything you need. So One of the things I'd like to note before getting into the specifics of the courses is how long they're meant to take. They have designed them so that they take four to six months to complete and each history class, so American history, for example, is designed to take two years or four separate semesters. Each course, as you can see, is designed to be one semester long. Now, it is a self-paced online class, so of course you can tweak that to your own homeschool needs. There's three ways of approaching these courses. You could take the basic track, the standard track, or the advanced track. Now, as you progress in complexity along those tracks, the courses and the materials become more directed towards college prep, and in particular, AP exams, etc. Another feature of this curriculum that I like is the creator's stated objective of teaching students how to think critically, and in particular, how to think like historians. They do not assume that students come into reading a primary or secondary document just knowing how to evaluate for bias, and there's specific lessons designed to teach that skill. So to that end of teaching students how to think like a historian, the program very specifically 
teaches students to take notes through using guided notes, and I will show you those as we go into more depth. They also have a very robust vocabulary section that not only teaches students how to integrate vocabulary and read vocabulary in context of the documents, but they also teach them how to memorize that vocabulary and reinforce that knowledge. So As homeschoolers, I know that one of the things that stresses us out is teaching older kids and high schoolers in particular how to write well and how to write a critical paper, not just reiterating facts, but also creating ideas and creating conclusions from what they read. So I appreciate that the curriculum makes an effort to go through in a step-by-step -step process how a research paper is written, from evaluating primary and secondary documents, creating a thesis, creating arguments to support that thesis, and then finishing it all off in a complete research paper. You'll notice on this page that the creators also emphasize that these skills, these critical thinking skills, are meant to be extended past the classroom into real world conversations. So I appreciate that they are consciously trying to teach these skills in a real world context. Broadly, each course has about 400 to 500 pages of text and images and hundreds of pages of guided notes. There are also helpful videos about how to use each of the components of the course. Each of the course features about 70 mini lectures that are filmed on location uh, with Dr. Jackson explaining what has happened historically in that location. And each course also features audio versions of each of the lessons. So as you're reading along with the text, there is an audio format of that. So if you have uh, learners who prefer that format, prefer to listen as they read, that is available to you. Before I show you the courses in particular, I wanted to introduce you to the two creators of the program. They are Dr. Jackson and Nate Norlander. And whereas Dr. Jackson comes from a college professor perspective and creates the videos as well as the text portion of the lessons, Mr. Neurlander comes from a middle school and high school teaching perspective, and he creates a lot of the scaffolding and the guidance, particularly with respect to the writing and critical analysis portion of the courses. As I mentioned previously, they have four different historical periods planned as classes. Each of these is four courses or four semesters. Only American history is available now. Coming soon is world history and then Western civilization and then Asian history. So okay, this might be a good option for you for several years. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of how this course is organized. This is the very first part of American history to begin the world over again. And the first thing that struck me when I came into the course is just how well organized it all is. Every single one of these topics is organized in a very clear outline form. And not only is it in an outline form, each of these is actually a hyperlink. So you can easily click on one and go to that particular page. So when you navigate to the Getting Started Guide, you have two videos to orient you. One orients you to the entire course as a whole, what it's about, etc. And then the other one tells you more about the nitty gritty of administrative work. So how are you going to do this grading? How do the rubrics work? How are you going to submit grades? And I think that's very useful so that it's all presented for you early. So coming back to the landing page for this course, you'll notice that each course is divided into 10 units. And within each unit are different lessons, and within each lesson are different subtopics. As I scroll down, you'll notice that each lesson is divided up in a similar way, where you have different questions or different sub-lessons that have text to read for the student or to listen to. Then you have a summary of that entire topic and structure terms or vocab terms for that lesson, a quiz, and then at the end of that unit, you have a document lesson. And the document lesson is where you do the analysis of the primary and secondary documents and do that weighing of bias and critical analysis and synthesizing all of the information that you just learned in the unit. When you start any of the units, there is a unit preview, if you can see. So 1.0 is before Columbus unit preview. 2.0 is the Explorers unit preview. The unit preview includes guiding questions. So what are we covering in the sessions within this unit, the subtopics? And then what secondary sources you're going to be reading in the document lesson? A extended timeline of the period you're going to be studying within this unit. So you have a map of the different locations that we're going to be talking about. And then you have all the structure terms and all the vocab that you'll be covering 
within the lesson all in one place for you. There is a summary of each of the sections laid out for you. Sometimes it's really helpful to read through a summary first to orient you in time and space here. And sort of like reading the flyleaf of a book, you know why you're here, you know what you're here to learn details about. So if we go into a random unit here, like Age of Exploration and click on it, you will come to an introductory page for that topical area. Now I'm gonna make this smaller so you can see it a little bit better. Within the age of exploration, it'll orient you to where you are in the curriculum. You are in unit two of this course in your in session four. So that gives you sort of an idea of where you are. It tells you what to do before starting. Now, one of the things I love about this course is that it offers you guided notes. When I click on the guided notes, I want to show you what they look like, because sometimes when you tell students to do a free form kind of note taking, you get either way too many details with not enough important concepts or you just sort of get headings without enough details. And I think having a guided way of taking notes is really helpful to students to learn, you know, what are we listening for and why are we in this class? Like what, what is the purpose and how are we gonna organize all of these uh, little factoids and things that we learn? So as you can see in this example guided notes, it lays out First, a question for the students like, and how did the English get in on the exploration game? I love that these subtopics are organized as questions. It invites the student to be more of a historian, right? It invites them to be more analytical and curious in their thinking rather than just absorbing everything and not synthesizing the information. It encourages a little bit of exploration in their own right. You have here a graphic organizer, which is a great way of taking notes. The three different countries that we are focusing on here their respective explorers, when and what territory were explored, and the details of that exploration. At the end of the guided notes, you have a little bit more of secondary analysis and synthesizing of information. So you can see here already within the guided notes, you're kind of learning how to structure a research paper. You are synthesizing that information and breaking down those individual details that you'll include within each of your separate sections of, for example, a research paper. And then you have a conclusion section. How would you summarize the key takeaways from your work? And then you have a structure term section. So you have all of these keywords. Not only does this course provide you with guided notes, it also provides you with a key and rubrics. So as you scroll up, you'll notice a materials tab. If you click on the materials tab, you can actually see the guided notes for each of these lessons within unit two in one place if you wanted to print them out ahead of time. And next to that, you will see a key for each of them. And when you go to it, you can see that there's very clear answers laid out for you. So as a teacher of multiple students, often as a homeschool parent, you won't have time uh, to do everybody's reading. And this really helps you to grade your students' work because all of the answers are laid out clearly for you. Another really nice feature is that all of the text is accompanied by audio recordings. So if your student prefers to listen while they read or listen in addition to reading, that option is available for you. And you can actually download that separately so you can listen to it you know, away from your computer. The beginning of each unit defines key objectives. So you can see here, identify the key age of exploration explorers and explain and give examples of the primary reasons for exploration. There's also a brief summary of the entire unit, the audio recording, as I mentioned, of the reading. And you have this beautiful timeline uh, with a scrolling bar at the bottom that takes you through different events that you'll be studying in a chronological way. And then you have the session content as well as a completion marker, so a percentage marker. I'm gonna to go to one particular section. How did the English get in on the exploration game? The lesson starts with a question, again, inviting that curiosity. You have a textual component as well as a picture here of John Cabot. And then you have an embedded link for more information if you wanna research it even further, which is really nice. You can go directly to the next topic from here, as you can see, but I'm not gonna do that in the interest of time. I'm gonna scroll down to the next different type of section, which is the summary and the structure term, so you can see what that looks like. So for session 2.4, which had those five subtopics, this is the summary. So it sort of synthesizes all this information for you. After the summary, you have a structure term section, and that's basically the vocab section of the course, where you have the key terms from 
2.4, and then you have definitions. So the first thing is just matching the terms to their definitions. You also have flashcards as well as separate assignments that you can upload. The next section of the lesson is a quiz, and I just wanted to show you briefly what this looks like. You have matching terms. You can click and drag these answers into uh, their appropriate locations. You also have just multiple choice, and they're fairly short, and then you can finish the quiz, and it will give you a real-time answer. At the end of the unit, as I mentioned, you have a document lesson, as you see here. So when you get to the document lesson, you'll see it's organized very similarly to the previous lessons. You have a clear title. You have guided notes and a reminder of what you have to do before you start. The objectives are clearly labeled. And then it goes through how you actually read a historical document. You have a source analysis, contextual analysis, you have inferences, so you're looking at what claims are being made, is the evidence convincing, uh, what is said, not said, but implied, etc. Do the language and tone of the source reveal any biases? and then the corroboration. So you're evaluating the other sources. Do they agree or disagree? What explains the differences? And does this information make you skeptical or trusting? So there is a video to watch about this, and then you can upload your assignment. And again, as I mentioned, in materials, if you scroll up, you will see all of that. So the handout on historical accuracy is right here for you. So how you should read historical documents is clearly laid out. And you also have notes for what you're looking for. So for this guided question, you have directions. You have uh, what sources you're looking at, the vocab from that source that you're focusing on. So here you have the Howard Zinn section, and then your third source. And then you have what you're looking for. There's model answers provided here, but there is area for you to put down your own answers. It asks the students to create a conclusion and then their takeaways from this lesson as well. So what really happened? How do we know? Why do some sources frame events so differently than others? And then it brings the question into context for the students by asking, is our guiding question still relevant in modern times in terms of its content and the methods we used to research it? Should we still care about what happened on Columbus's second voyage? Fill in the blank with a consequential question about the past. What questions can you think of that you've never researched yourself, like Hiroshima, etc.? So it definitely extends out these ideas further than one might expect. Now that we've gone through how each of the units is structured, I wanted to show you briefly a video of a document lesson with Mr. Neurlander and also a video of the section from Professor Jackson. Okay, let's get into the question for today. We want to ask what really happened on Columbus's second voyage and how do we know? The context for this lesson comes from session 2.3. So as you'll notice, he immediately tells you what section you should be looking at for context. So if you like, haven't done that section or if you need to review that section, you don't have to hunt and peck through the curriculum. Uh, if you're like me, when you think of Columbus, you might think of his first voyage in 1492 when he was searching for a western trade route with Asia and uh, mistakenly believed he found that in the Americas. It happened on Columbus's second voyage can be wildly different depending on who you're reading. Next, like last week, we will pay close attention to language and look for language that implies uh, that there is an author behind the words, and not just a mysterious authority, because it helps to flesh out the differences between these two sources. And we'll read the next line as well. When the Spaniards took prisoners, they... So he goes through the documents and highlights and key portions what the students should be focusing on, how tone is coming out differently, Etc. So he really does walk you through this process, and I think you know that's incredibly helpful. So if you navigate to one of the other sections of the lesson 2.4, you'll notice the text, but you'll also notice the embedded video from Professor Jackson. And I'm just going to show you a little bit about that. So as you can see, you get immediately to the location that we're talking about. We're talking about exploration of Florida. They're taking you right to the Everglades. Ponce de Leon. Ponce de Leon wades ashore in 1513 in search of gold and slaves and maybe a fountain of youth. And then later, a few years later, he actually attempts to establish a permanent settlement here in what he has named La Florida. Of course, that name has stuck, but his settlement will not. That 1521 attempt, which he makes along with hundreds of other would-be settlers, is thwarted. By he dies on the Mississippi in 1542, years after he started. And of course, they never find 
the goals that they're looking for. And then, so as you can see, the video takes you through different locations that are relevant to the material in the reading. And I think that's a great way of orienting students. to. So navigating back to the landing page for this unit, I hope that gives you a good idea of how the course is structured. You really do start with guiding questions and orientation in time and space of what you're studying, all of the vocab words that you will be focusing on that you're looking for ahead of time, and a summary ahead of time to really prepare the student for what they're there to learn. And then as you go into each section, so this is section 2.4, you have guided notes, you have the audio recording for the text you're about to read, you have videos embedded throughout, you have a timeline just for that section, again, to orient you. You have a summary to bring it all together for you, a structure term section with three different types of reinforcement, yeah. and then you have a quiz to really see if you retain this information. Once you've finished all the topical parts of that lesson and taken the quiz and reviewed your vocabulary, you do have a document lesson which helps you critically analyze primary and secondary resources that are relevant to what you just read about. Now that I've given you an overview of how the course is structured in terms of content and materials and organization, I figured I should tell you how you can actually start using the course. You have two options available to you. They are subscription and purchase. Now you can subscribe for access to all the courses and content, or you can purchase courses for a one-time fee, like a single course at a time. They both include an additional option to sign up as an instructor, and then you can oversee multiple students, for example, if you're running a co-op. And you can also have membership in Nomad Nation, which is their community. Nomad Nation gives you access to like peer feedback groups, supplementary materials like webinars, lectures, live stream events. Um, and then there's a Q&A with the professors. So you can have history, homeschooling, teaching, learning, you can have just open-ended conversation with your two instructors. The purchase currently is $199 for a course. That's a single course for life. You'll have access to it for as long as this exists, or you can do a subscription for $25 a month. Again, these prices are subject to change from when you see this video, but right now that's what the prices are. If you have additional questions about the timing of the course, how long it will take, how many lessons are there, et cetera, when you go to the courses tab, each course is clearly laid out for you. All of those questions are answered. You have a clear course description. Again, they not only tell you the lessons, but they tell you how many pages of text there are, how many assessments there are, how many vocab boards there are, and how much audio content there is. Clear accreditation information and lays out a scope and sequence for what they're covering how the grading and the rubrics work, and how much time the courses will take. And of course, you can always get a free preview as well. So definitely avail yourself of all of that information. I hope that has given you a really good overview of this program, because I am super impressed, I got to tell you. Like when I went through it, uh, I think it lays out a really interactive, rich audio visual experience for the students as they go through history. I, I especially love the document lessons. I think learning how to evaluate documents with a critical and keen eye is a really important skill no matter what field you end up in. I think the videos are a great way of orienting students to the time and place and giving them relevance and context about the history they're learning about. So overall, I definitely think you should give the nomadic professor a look and see whether it will be the right choice for high school history for your family. I'd like to thank the folks over at The Nomadic Professor for allowing me to review and see how the curriculum is structured and share it with you all. And as always, I realize your time is valuable. Thank you so much for spending some of it with me and I wish you the very best day.